to 24 of November. My goodness, uh, I'm Dana Dernfurt. I'm also known as Nuclear Proctologist.org, and you can call it 709-589-4406. Hope everybody's doing good during this extinction level event caused by the nuclear industry. Let me get so much to get through. We got a poll. Is building all nuclear power plants in prime active farmland a calculated ruthless assault upon children? And the reason I say children in particular because they're so much more vulnerable to radiation. And putting radiation in the food and filling up your supermarkets is a, a pretty ruthless thing to do to people. But when all your nuclear power plants are surrounded by farms, and they know the difference. There's tons of studies how plants accumulate radiation. DIAEA admits there is no such thing as a safe level. In fact, the standard they're using is based on benefit, which is ma uh, natural, not man-made. So they actually don't have a standard. Because nuclear radiation is the most carcinogenic thing that exists. So that makes sense. Then let's surround it by farms, because all the studies shows how tomato plants and other plants will suck up the radiation. Make sure the milk is nice and radioactive to kill your loved ones. Child's risk of cancer from radiation is tens to thousands of times higher than an adult with the same exposure because your immune system is still developing. There's 1,800 illnesses. Do you really think it's an accident that all nuclear power plants are surrounded by active prime farmland? It's not just cancer. There's 1,800 illnesses. Heart disease and strokes and deaths by heart attacks is a major event after nuclear accidents, by the way, or just consuming radiation. So you don't want... If you don't want to be eating radioactive food. Why are they growing it in a nuclear wasteland? Radiation health specialists, children with over 11 beckles a kilogram start to see heart problems. So if your nuclear power plant is surrounded by farms, it's pretty easy to get 11 beckles a kilogram into the targeted uh, victims, which is all humans, all species, but particularly children. Experimentally determined translocation of cesium-134 in potatoes. So there's no way they don't understand building a nuclear plant and a reprocessing plant like Sellafield right there in the United Kingdom, surrounded by farms, probably a bad idea. Columbia medical professor inhaling just one hot radioactive hot particle, everything which is a fission product, can cause cancer, but everything comes out of a nuclear meltdown is a hot product. You really think they don't know the difference? You really think they don't know that food is now going to hurt the people that consume it? Every one of them? Every single one of them. And if you eat it regularly with the bioaccumulation, that's just evil. That's just mean, man. The influence of the development of temperate fruit tree species and their uptake of radionuclides. So do you know all the species will sequester man-made radiation, but it doesn't do that with natural radiation. You can't get more potassium in your body than your body has a located. Or you can't get more potassium in my glasses than my glasses is located. And potassium is harmless. So when people start talking about potassium 40s, they're lying to you. 
There's only one reason to mention the word potassium-40 is to stomp on your head and try to kill you. They're trying to murder you when they talk about potassium-40. 50 becquels a kilogram of man-made radiation in adults lead to irreversible lesions in the vital organs. So 10 becquels in children, 11 becquels in children in studies from Ukraine and Belarus showed that children will get holes in their hearts. You got any idea how fucked up that is? So when 50 becquels a kilogram in humans lead to irreversible lesions in the vital organs, that should terrify you. Because almost all nuclear power plants are surrounded by farms. It's a catastrophic thing. Now, when you consider that 100 becquels a kilogram of gamma pre-Fukushima was nuclear waste, the only reason they mention cesium, by the way, is to, to screw you over. So you don't think about all the other isotopes that you're supposed to think about. The biggest byproduct is not cesium, it's curium. And curium isotopes need lead shielding 20 times thicker than you do for uranium, which is significantly more than you would for cesium. After the nuclear meltdown in North America, immediately in the United States, Canada, and Europe, they raised it to over a thousand becquels a kilogram, so Japan didn't look like a monster because pre Fukushima in Japan it was 0 0.1 becquel per kilogram because they had so many plants and so many accidents. So, why are all f nuclear power plants surrounded by farms? So they can murder you in increments in your supermarkets, in your restaurants, and in your refrigerators they're targeting your children they're actually targeting the children because it's on purpose the poisoning is on purpose it's not illegal to poison you by the way the congress and parliaments worldwide don't have the authority to make it illegal to poison you with man-made anthropogenic radiation isn't that reassuring <clears throat> so who's in charge it ain't you and it ain't your government that your government let them build it in farmland. 134, 185 strontium in fruit plants. So it's not like they don't understand how this works. There's millions and millions of studies on how food uptakes radiation immediately and constantly and sequesters it, and you consume it and get sick and die from 1,800 illnesses. It's not just cancer, for goodness sakes. Nuclear radiation is the most carcinogenic thing that exists. Well, so let's barrel it in farmland. The fuel pools at all these nuclear power plants, just two for each reactor. <laughs> oh, there's also a common spin fuel pool on the site, too. Don't forget that. That's an extra 450. They're still splitting the atom. So when it's in the reactor, it's in the containment. 18 months later, it comes out of the containment, goes in a fuel pool for a few decades where it's still splitting the atoms to the point where it boils off 120,000 liters of water a day, 120 tons of water a day. Each liter is going to be saturated with trillions of fission products because it's, that's how they... Uh, boil water originally. Once you take it out of the reactor, it's still going to boil the water, except there's no containment that's released into the farms. That's what is surrounded by farms. And the industry is so ruthless. So here's how they treat the kids in Japan. Smiling mascot, an actual mascot, asks the Fukushima kids to gargle to stay safe from radiation. It's like saying wearing a paper suit is going to protect you at a nuclear meltdown. Radioactive sparkles on happy children, happy children. There was another professor who says radiation only comes to people that don't, harms people rather, that don't smile. There's some serious voodoo right there. Why are these things surrounded by farms? Why do they hate us so much? Do you think it's an accident? Because obviously 
it's not. They they know the difference. The study shows that there's no way they don't know that this stuff sucks up radiation. So go look up ear shots of any nuclear power plant you want, and this is what you're going to see. As far as, as far as you can see, you're going to see farms, rather. And by the way, eating that food in the supermarket, you go home, and you're in your 50s, and f late 40s, and 60s, you start eating the stuff, you get a heart attack and drop dead at the table. You don't even have to be close to these disease factories, because 1,800 diseases... Once it compromises your immune system, every other thing out there can attack you now and you can't defend against it. Once your immune system is compromised, you're more vulnerable to pathogens and viruses that were previously harmless and innocuous and benign. Cesium-137 vertical soil transfer by a tree root system. Do you really think they don't know having nuclear disease factories and farmland is probably as um, a conscious murders. This is conscious murder. Don't be fooled by paid industry consultants. Low doses of radiation do cause cancer, but there's 1,800 illnesses and diseases and autoimmune deficiencies and injuries and illnesses that will manifest typically before cancer. Not all the time, because if you eat it all the time, your body sequesters all this radiation in your muscles, your organs, and your bones. Each day, all day, you're eating this radioactive food. And so everything that sequesters in your body from the man-made anthropogenic radiation, your body attacks the white blood cells. If you're doing it each day, you're talking about destroying the chromosomes from the, the pulsing arms, the speed of light, and you're producing the white blood cells, right? And once this gets into your bones, it destroys your, your children's stem cells. And like your, your bones and everything, the marrow is full of some of the most important things your body needs. And the regenerative of it, the red blood cells and everything else. So if you destroy that with radiation, you're guaranteed in for a rough ride to the very bitter end. So when you see a farm and Zizi, a uh, nuclear power plant situated in farmland, that's murdering. That's a murder machine. It, it, and it starts off as a disease factory and ultimately over decades become a mass genocide machine. And then the radioactive fallout from the fuel pools at these sites is atrocious. The fuel pools are hemorrhaging radiation all day. So as the plant gets older, there's more radiation hemorrhaging out each day. Even after it closes, the fuel pools are still hemorrhaging radiation. And it's significantly worse than that. <laughs> like, you you got to listen to me. you gotta, you got to fight this evilness. This is evilness and overdrive. You, there's nowhere else you're going to go where somebody's going to explain this to you. That's the most frightening part of it. The most terrifying facet of it. Is there's nobody else who's going to even try to enlighten you, let alone warn you. And more, like, I should be out in, in the streets screaming, Bill, bring out your dead. A health physicist in the U.S. worried about inhaling hot particles from Fukushima. I'm more worried about the food, and I'm worried about inhaling it. And you, you, you should worry about inhaling it. Right? You should worry about it, considering how much fell in North America. This is a study out of Ottawa, Canada. 220 million atoms per liter of iodine 129 per liter in the rainfall. Does the rain fall by the liter? A liter here, a liter there? No. So you had, you got the whole area immediately saturated with a fission product with a 150 million year life, 10 half lives. 
There was also 20 million particles of iodine-131 per liter. Both of these, uh, will, your thyroids will get saturated because you're talking about so much exposure. And the insects and birds and animals and mammals, their thyroids um, were producing radioactive hormones on a whole different level. Bummer, right? Sixteen thousand workers quit at Fukushima, but they weren't workers. They were the homeless and the destitute, the victims of society, the immigrants who don't speak that language, who don't know what the hell is going on. Because there's no academics at Fukushima. There's no nuclear scientists, nuclear physicists. Nuclear physicists wouldn't even fly over it at thirty thousand feet. I bet you. This is insidiously evil to to build these disease factories in the middle of farmland. This is a an assault upon the children to attack them because they're the most vulnerable. And you in good intentions buy try to buy good vegetables and you don't know, you can't tell. It's saturated with plutonium and americium and neptunium and strontium. And the exposure is just a single exposure lasts the rest of your life. <coughs> Total coincidence, right? Radiation in small doses actually can be disproportionately worse. So spread it over time is one of the worst things you can do because it's a creeper genocide machine happens in increments over a few decades and everybody gets sick and unhealthy. This is, uh, this, we're, we're, we're under siege, this entire planet and every species on it. This is Mayday time. This is, you are in end times because this industry has poisoned everything and everybody and now it's accelerated. Now they're gone into overdrive. And not only that, they're, they're at their most scariest because there's no nuclear renaissance. They're falling apart. And they're, they're desperate to finish the job. That's what Fukushima basically was all about. Officials, officials, the people you hired to do the opposite, raise the radiation levels for residents to get iodate pills after the meltdown, 75 times higher than the Degenerate World Health Organization recommended. And they're degenerates. They're United Nations. They're the military-industrial complex. Irreversible heart damage for children with 50 becquels a kilogram. Irreversible. Look the word up sometime. Think about all of these nuclear power plants surrounded by farms, as far as you can see, and think about that statement there. Think about this statement here, last one. Irreversible heart damage. And then think about how Japan is shipping food now, worldwide, after it was banned for a decade by 55 countries. Not Canada, but everywhere else. Canada's like, we'll take it. <laughs> we'll take it. You can't send it anywhere else. Send it to Canada. We're not going to check it. So he poisoned everybody in Canada. Raphael Gross is here to drive the last nail in the stake of Canadians. Everybody else worldwide. The sadistic, demonic demon. Canada lifted all restrictions after 93 days. 55 countries kept the ban in place for over a decade, but then um, the, the nuclear industry put people in the key positions. In 2021, they all lifted it by shaking hands. No, no scientists needed. We'll just get Boris and the rest of them, shake a few hands. Everything will be good. Is that wish? Can I see your bicycle for a minute? Oh, yeah. So we got a poll tonight. Got a poll, got a poll, got a poll. 
Try eating stuff. They're, they're growing, growing food right alongside of one-ton bags. It's bad enough. Harvesting it is some kind of super evil. That's super evil. Ain't no need to be that evil. Is building all nuclear plants in prime active farmland a calculated ruthless assault upon children? Yep, Dana, it actually is. Oh. oh, yeah. There we go. What's it going to be tonight? Where am I to? What am I doing? Oh. Problems persist in Australia's outback. So the British... Went to Australia and set off um, nuclear bombs, but they also set off around 700 uh, dirty bombs where they took plutonium 239, the worst of the worst, and, and uranium 235, and wrapped it in conventional explosives and set it off. They've done that around 700 plus times. Because they loved uh, Australia. Australia has the biggest cancers per 100,000 people worldwide, by the way. <clears throat> Cancer is just one of 1,800 illnesses. And by the way, that's not even going to protect you from radiation, let alone paper suits to use in Japan at Fukushima, who they claim they, they burn 7,000 paper suits a day. The end of the World War II, he saw the rise of the atomic arsenals. Let's rise. Rise. They went cuckoo. America had 55,000 silos in farmer's field. Waiting. And of course, they were hemorrhaging radiation too, right? Which was the tritium. And they have to replace it every 12 years on top of that. And we got blowing a gale down here. Nice if you're hearing any background noise. My, not much I can do about it. It's minus 10 or minus 11. It's blowing over. It's supposed to blow up to 100 kilometers around this time. Wanting to improve the effectiveness of the nuclear technology, nation approached Australia. So they went to Australia and they went to Maralinga, Montebello, and uh, a few other places. They waited for the wind to blow across Australia, and then they set off the nuclear weapons. <coughs> the Montebello test, the radiation uh, in Adelaide, 1,800 kilometers away, was uh, 98,000 counts per minute. And so it contaminated everything for at least 1,800 kilometers along with hundreds of smaller, hundred, well, this is important. They weren't smaller trials. They weren't smaller nuclear weapons. They were conventional explosives wrapped around uranium known as dirty bombs. Let's just call it what it is. <clears throat> right, like McAllister, McAllister, Oklahoma, Munitions facility only makes depleted uranium munitions. They're, each of them are dirty bombs. They have the exact criteria of what a dirty bomb is. And they're prior old uh, plastic. <coughs> Wait now, i got to take some more of this god-awful... I shouldn't say the word god, but this awful robotussin that works. Oh, uh, <clears throat> to take that much, I'll be slurring my speech pretty quick here. <coughs> Hoo -hoo, that's terrible, man. That should be illegal. They have stuff that actually tastes like the. We got a poll. Got everybody got a poll. Is building all nuclear power plants in prime active farmland? Calculated ruthless assault upon children. 
Could such a thing be possible? Yeah, it is. The primary tests were dubbed Operation Buffalo, Operation Antler, and despite those two being the larger of the trials, the smaller tests are said to have generated more nuclear contamination. I can't remember what... Uh, cause they had a hydrogen bomb they used down there, didn't they? Some produced mushroom clouds and radioactive fallout said to travel as far as the city of Townsville. We know that one of their explosions was 1,800 kilometers away in Adelaide. It was 98,000 chems per minute of gamma. So now you've got to calculate alphas, neutrons, and betas and the x-rays from those four different types of emissions because they don't mingle when they pulse energy almost at the speed of light every second for millions of years. When they hit each other at almost the speed of light, that's a braking effect. They change direction, creates an X-ray effect. Think of a, a spark being created, something physical you can see. Well, that's created, this effect uh, is known as X-rays, and X-rays will sterilize you're getting full body x-rays if you have like 185 counts per minute. That means you're, you're having this x-ray effect all the time around you. So you're getting full body x-rays from that kind of exposure. And like 200 counts per minute on my Geiger counter right now, 180 was an evacuation zone for nuclear power plants pre-Fukushima meltdowns. So I should evacuate uh, this part of Canada because... You're going to see numbers like that across Canada. Uh, that's not where we're supposed to be. So little boy fat man held 64 kilograms of uranium and 64 kilograms of plutonium. 6.4. right? Because the uranium was the Hiroshima, the plutonium was the Nagasaki bombs in Japan. Uh, cleaning up the Australia outback after nuclear tests, you can see the the, the traitorous Australian government in that era. Britain ended nuclear tests in Australia after both countries, which is Australia and Britain, signed the United Nations, the League of Nations, Partial ban treaty, partial. They can still detonate underground. Or dirty bombs, right, where they wrap fission products and conventional explosives. And they didn't care. They'd done it in Australia because they didn't want to contaminate the United Kingdom. And they knew they were going to contaminate it. Australia was created as a penal colony. Britain, is, even to this day, has not forgot that. <coughs> Began cleaning up in 67, burying contaminated materials in concrete-covered trenches after a report by a British physicist, Noah Pierce, was published in 1968. Australia released Britain of any further liability in Maralinga and Montebello and the other places. Now we know the report was flawed. No, it was cover up to release Britain of their genocide and omnicide against Australians. That was a hideous thing to do, by the way. So it was hideously evil to go to Australia and contaminate Australia. And I, when I say they they waited for the wind to blow across Australia before the test, they, that's exactly what they did. They had all kinds of planes doing weather. They had all kinds of people on the ground sending up weather balloons and rockets. They knew exactly what the wind was going to do. And that the Australian government, after the British left, had commissioned a secret study where they recovered uh, pieces of children's bones from 20 th 29,000 children. During the autopsy, they were taking femurs and stuff like this out of the dead children, and they were sending it to a research institute without telling the parents. And all of them were saturated 
with plutonium and strontium. Nuclear industry. If it's evil, they're up to it. They're not up to anything good. The full extent of the nuclear test wasn't discovered until 84, following public scrutiny. Well, no, the public knew there was no good going on, but uh, the lunatic government at the time and currently is pro-nuclear scum, right? The Royal Commission in 85 found the site still house significant radiation hazards. Now, over the years, I've done a number of presentations on Australian British bombing. And if Scum Degenerate YouTube did knock down my site last year when I was out looking for spiders, because they bioaccumulate radiation a thousand percent more than background, uh, I would direct you to it. And they also made me take down 300 videos with a court order, which was 1,600 videos they took down with no strikes on my account. The natives, of course, were targeted, like they are worldwide, and particularly in Australia. Australia really hates the natives, eh? It's really something. It took the government five years to clean up a massive area, so they didn't clean it up. You can't, like this, you know, if you look at Japan, they picked up 30 to 60 million one-ton bags. 30 million by 2015, one-ton bags. So you take a one-ton bag, put it in the back of a pickup truck that's 20 feet long, a one-ton truck, not a half-ton, but a one-ton, to take the 2,000-pound Japanese bag, that's five rows of traffic, bumper to bumper, right around the entire planet. If you go with the 30 million one-ton bag scenario, but if you go with the 60 million, that's 10 rows of traffic, bumper to bumper, that if you're going around the world, you're going to have to walk on the bumpers of 10 trucks to get to the other side of the road. It's, it's a significant amount, which was only 3% of the habitable land and farmland, I might add, that they actually picked up the bags on. You can't clean it up. It was immediately contaminated one day later after they picked up a one-ton bag. That's going to be just as contaminated the other day. They couldn't clean up any of the forest, and the forest sucks it up all the way to the tips of, like, say, pine needles, and the pollen is radioactive. Cesium is brought back to the surface each year by plants. Um, by 2000, all but 120 square kilometers of 3200 square kilometers were deemed clean enough for unrestricted access to the natives. But there's no such thing as clean enough. The Maralinga Rehabilitation Technical Advisory Panel. Now, they got an island. With the, the Montebello Islands are too radioactive for tourists to be there for more than one hour, right? We covered that story a few months ago. The study showed that the estimation of plutonium contamination at the Montebello Maralinga site was uh, 10 times less than what it actually was. Like my Geiger counter is not going to pick up plutonium, for instance. Eh? Research, uh, recent research conducted by Melbourne University found hot particles still exist. The microscopic remnants uranium plutonium, which is not going away for a quarter million years before 50% of it decays, which due to the heart and uranium is not going away for 4 billion, due to the harsh environment of the Australian outback was slowly releasing plutonium to the soil and the uh, groundwater. I found the plutonium resulted in continued releases of radiation into the environment is absorbed and ingested by humans, animals, and plants, etc., etc., etc. 
Well, more research is needed regarding the breakdown of the particles, but I mean, the, that those equations are understood. They might not have access, know it exists, but it's, it's actually very well understood. And that the impact on the weather of their releases, the study overall is a guide for environmental protection. First off, there's no such thing as environmental protection when it comes to radioactive fallout. It covers everything worldwide. It's like saying that the snowstorm is not going to land on your new car in the driveway when you go home. When you wake up in the morning, you can't figure out why the car is covered in snow because you thought your new car was immune to everything, bird shit included. That's, some, that's the, the thinking of the nuclear apologists, right? They're the type of people that would be confused if they bought a new car and it came home and it snowed and the snow stayed on the car. They, they would be devastated, like, oh, but I'm a nuclear scientist. It shouldn't happen to me. Well, more research is needed regarding the breakdown of the particles. Well, like, you don't have to worry about it for at least a quarter million years. It's just going to pulse energy every second for the first quarter million years, and then it'll break down 50% of it give or take five or ten. Contamination cause long-term health impact. Well, it only needs a single exposure to make you sick for the rest of your life. The more your exposure you got, the more sequestered in your muscles, your organs, and your bones, the more your body is under siege. And so the more white blood cells you're producing, because everything you sequester, if you keep eating it, you got more in your body, you need more white blood cells to attack each one for the rest of your life. And that has to try to repair the DNA and the chromosome that being wrecked by the pulse every second for the rest of your life. Um, so, you know, during your body, if those pulses are reaching each other, and one's gamma is one alpha or better or neutrons, now you've got an x-ray going on in there too. And you do. When, when they say tritium to you, that's the equivalent of telling you to shut up. Shut your mouth, just shut up. When you hear the word tritium, that's what they're actually saying to you. Like, shut up. You're too stupid to know anything. So shut up. When you try to convince you tritium is the only thing that came out of these sites, that's that's the arrogance and the hubris of this industry. Those residing in the areas of the Australia outback where the nuclear tests were conducted complained of health effects. They suffered due to plutonium. Uh, they don't call it the atomic plague for nothing. So your excrements are radioactive, for instance, right? Once you start getting enough pollution in your body, you're producing all these white blood cells displacing the red blood cells. Red blood cells carry oxygen nutrition. Now you start making stupid decisions, you have less oxygen. Oh, I can get out of the car at 60 miles an hour at some point, and I won't be hurt. Look at me. Watch this, honey. DNA damage, chromosome damage, lung cancers, radiation sickness, heart problems, liver problems, lung, respiratory, pituitary, thyroid, adrenaline, Alzheimer's, dementia, autism, diabetes, Down syndrome, schizophrenia. There's 1,800 illnesses and diseases. Your immune system is compromised. You, everything is vulnerable. And if you're a child and if you're a kid, you're you're a hundred times more vulnerable. And that's why we got a poll tonight. Is building all nuclear power plants, also known as disease factories, in prime active farmland, a calculated ruthless assault upon the children. And of course, that's exactly what it is. It's premeditated murder and genocide. And you can't see it or smell it or taste it or hear it or feel it or touch it or perceive it. Does that mean that you didn't get poisoned because you can't perceive it? The Australian government agreed in 2017 to provide increased health care for the indigenous people and veterans affected by radiation from nuclear testing conducted at Maralinga, Montebello, hopefully. And more is needed to ensure that 
the land becomes safe for future habitation and uses. Well, well how do you think that's going to happen? How do you think you're actually going to clean up something from 70 years ago? You really don't think, because a lot of this is desert. You think a lot of this, you, your entire country was covered. Your water tables and aquifers are contaminated permanently by it. It's better to look for revenge. A lot of the people that orchestrated are still alive. Bring back the death penalty, bring them in as war criminals, and get the last laugh. A Harris is down in the Philippines promoting small modular reactors. What a whack job story this one actually is. She isn't for women. All she cares about is U.S. military expansion, which is 100% true. Not 100% true, sure. Her visit to the Philippines, which is Typhoon City and, and uh, Earthquake Paradise, that, that's a great spot to put nuclear reactors. <coughs> and tsunamis. Yeah, perfect. Guaranteed to melt down there. She, like, wherever you find a military base, two weeks later, there's going to be all kinds of girls kidnapped across the country and brought to brothels, particularly children. A lot of the soldiers are young. That's common practice, right? Gabriella, Representative Arlene Brosa, vented her irk and irritation over the U.S. military industrial complexes. Personal lapdog. NATO's next challenge pinpointed as a wild card. NATO's not supposed to exist. They're completely out of control. They got nuclear weapons and they want to use them. They were created in response to the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union was dissolved along with everybody's pensions because that's what cowards do. Which is the strangest thing because they were more technologically advanced than the U.S. and China. And they had the weapons. They had no. They just. They didn't have their back to a wall. They had Gorbachev, with the shake of a hand, got rid of everybody's pensions and futures. Don't try to understand it. Oh yeah, this is a uh, the predecessor to China's president, being kicked out of a NATO meeting, chased out. Oh, you gotta go. Get out. Come on. But 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 but. Oh, so the new Oppenheimer movie's coming out. Well, they're shooting it anyway. Focus on a man that changed the world, Robert Oppenheimer. I got a video clip of him here somewhere. I've um, I've probably listened to all of his interviews, every one of them, many many times. By the way, giggity, giggity, giggity. I'm just, uh, I'm on a search here. Give me a second. Do you do what I do? That's one for the money, two for the show. Let's see what this one is. We knew the world would not be the same. Few people laughed. Few people cried. Most people were silent. Gita. Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty and to impress him takes on his multi-armed form on 
and says, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. become death to destroy your worlds because you can't put the genie back in the bottle. So they got Emily Blunt is playing in Kitty Oppenheimer who suffered right from severe depression by the way. Matt Damon as Leslie Groves because it's Groves, Lawrence, and Oppenheimer right? The three. Uh, Louis Strauss None of them to be Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, no, it's they got a huge amount of actors in the show. I I'm not gonna get through all of them. Uh, as Edward, which is his brother, Teller's brother, or Edward Teller rather, who became a dictator during that whole process, right? He wanted all the fame. He was jealous of Oppenheimer. And Ernest Lawrence, Lawrence, Grove, Teller, and Oppenheimer. They polluted the entire planet to make their bombs, the original bombs on top of that. These reactors that they were using had no containment. It was a... So in order to protect the world from radiation, they poison the world with radiation. I'm looking forward to seeing it, I think. I don't know. I don't really watch uh, TV, but certain movies, if it's about the nuclear industry, um, excuse me, I'm going to watch it. Ah, uh, yeah, Mox Fumarize, a Japan nuke plant, after a year's delay from La Hague in French, France, we covered it when he stuck it on a ship there a couple of months ago and headed it back to Japan with it, right? They had protests. France are the best, man, at protesting nuclear. They got the best nuclear protesters I've ever seen, anyway. Let me see if I can find the video. I got some of my favorite favorites. What the hell is a fra uh, France? Dana? Oh, I changed the search on this video to make it a little easier to find. I'll still find it, but enjoy. This is how you're supposed to protest the nuclear industry. There's only one way to protest the nuclear industry. There's the wrong way, and here's the right way. Get all your buddies together. The clashes were violent and widespread. Hundreds of police and anti-nuclear protesters chased each other through the fields and woodland near Vallon. <laughs> Roadblocks were set up to try to prevent more protesters converging on the area. But at one point, a group managed to block a section of the railway line. Fierce <laughs> protests are expected along the 700-kilometer route to Germany. You guys rock, man. The clashes were violent and widespread. Hundreds of police and anti- Now, what you need <coughs> to make this work is you need, I'll slow it down, 25%? No, let me do a bit faster. So what you need is fire hoses with the brass, uh, with the brass tip on it. And so the fire hose, you can throw it over the shield, and then the brass head will come down, split their helmets open. <coughs> Hopefully, right? Can't win them all, but a bit of practice, you'll get really good at it. And that'll break up your charge, and 
if you wound a lot of them, then you, they got to rescue those guys. And sort of the fire hose is how you break the lines. Works like a charm. Just like two potatoes would. <laughs> Scary, isn't it? Turning out a string of defective. <clears throat> so Max Fuel arrives. The frick is that? Sounds cool, but I don't know what the hell it was. Hang on. Because normally it's the finger. There it is. So normally it's this guy. That's too fast. Half speed. Well, it's not supposed to make that sound, is it? Just bear with me. Let me try, um, what have I got there makes noise, there you go, try this one. Yeah, okay. So let's see if that other one will work, I don't know what the hell is going on. <coughs> there you go. That's the sound, isn't it? It's a reassuring sound that we're all used to. Uh, okay. So Max Fuel arrives in Japan. Japan. The disease factory capital of the planet Earth. With four fuel pools melted down. Four reactors in common spin fuel pool and possible reactor six melted down. Turning out, but uh, Chernobyl is bigger than the world's biggest nuclear disaster. Dana, not Fukushima. Shut up. Uh-uh. Turning out a string of defective mixed oxide fuel in La Hague, folks. And they were shipping them to Japan. Japan had to ship them back. Too bad he didn't stick them in a reactor, the French said. Ha <laughs> ha. They done it on purpose, I guarantee it. A ship carrying a made in France, Mox Fuel, docked at the nuclear plant in the disease factory. So I thought uranium was dirt cheap. It's so cheap to get a hire a ship for two months to bring it there. It planned to be used for plume, uh, plutermal power generation. It's this is nuclear. This is mixed oxide fuel. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, the Kansi Electric in 2017 ordered 32 MOX fuel assemblies, including the latest ship. And however, a streak of defective fuel assemblies, in which had the wrong mixture of plutonium and uranium. You know what? That would have blown up. Because a mixed oxide fuel facility burns at 200,000 degrees hotter than a normal disease factory when it blows up or melts down. We're not mixed evenly. We're found at the French plant. The French, they can't get anything right on the protesting. They got 500 security guards around this facility on top of that. This is the sixth mixed oxide fuel delivery to the Takama plant. The first batch arriving in 1999 was manufactured in the United Kingdom, which would have been Sellafield, formerly known as Windscale. It was later discovered the inspection data had been falsified. So Britain, uh, France falsified the Max fuel. Britain falsified the Max fuel data. <clears throat> they were they were trying they were they were cruising for a nuclear meltdown, weren't they? And the fuel was returned to the manufacturer unused. The first batch discovered that inspection data had been falsified. Wow. Why so evil, Nuki? Uh, the the Melox factory. <coughs> from the second batch onward but a series of defects were reported the defects believed to be partially attributable to technical complexity of the mixed oxide fuel production 
So the normal emissions from the normal fuel is 2 billion times more toxic than industrial poison. The mixed oxide fuel is 2 billion times, 2 billion times more toxic than industrial poison. Once it goes through the chain reaction. So when you take it and put it in the fuel pool, the emissions, because it's still splitting the atoms for the next million years or so, those atoms are 2 billion times, 2 billion times more toxic than industrial poison. This is why they're surrounded by farms. Which brings up an interesting question. How's the pole going? Is building all nuclear power plants, a.k.a. disease factories, prime active farmland, a calculated ruthless assault upon the children. We had 97% of the people got it together. 3% is obviously confused from what's right and what's wrong. The Nuclear Engineering International, if you ever want to read what a degenerate scumbag uh, many of them will say, that's one of the sites you can pick up that uh, degenerate scumbag lingo at. The inter says essential key components repairs will impact schedule. Uh, again, some estimates have it at this will cost about $65 billion just to prove a concept. Nuclear is disgusting, man. They're just robbing every country blind worldwide. There's around a million studies a year done for the nuclear industry, all paid for by the taxpayers on top of that. They're just robbing everything, every country blind that they exist in, eh? I'm only talking about North America, by the way. Construction's inter is funded mainly by the European Union. The remainder by China, India, Japan, Korea, Russia, the USA. Don't forget Canada. Don't forget the scumbag Canada. It will be the largest of more than 100 fusion reactors built since the 1950s. And will use over 300 megawatts electricity to cause the plasma to absorb 50 megawatts. So that's, a, that's a, almost one third of a large reactor worth of energy. So it's running on gas, oil, and coal external power to do it, right? The total electricity consumed by the reactor and the facilities will peak at up to 620 milliwatts. This is like a small nuclear reactor, not, not small, but this is close to a large reactor you're talking about, worth of energy. And because it's a test reactor, they're going to vent everything into the environment. What else are they going to be inventing into the environment? Some estimates place the total cost will be 45 billion or 65 billion. Regardless of the final cost, 65 up to 65 billion, they have already been described as the most expensive science experiment of all time. And nothing but the best of the best metals and wires and cement and everything else. 23 kilometers tunnel full of technology just to prove a concept that they've been working on since 1906. It's extremely ruthless. Uh, they, they'll just destroy everything for the beloved nuclear. They couldn't care less about coming up with solutions. They just throw money at this but not at the real issue the most complicated engineering project in history. As potential attractions, the fuel is relatively abundant. No, it's not. Trading money occurs in trace amounts. I don't know where the study is. Uh, I don't know the exact number. It, total worldwide pre-nuclear age was around 100 kilograms. Just France and United Kingdom released thousands and thousands of kilograms just in the first decade of man-made. And there, there, there is a huge difference. 
and man-made and, and natural stuff from the solar system. There is natural stuff, but it's a tiny, insignificant amount. But they polluted the entire planet with all the other full ranges of isotopes, too. Furthermore, a fusion reactor would produce virtually no CO2 emissions. <coughs> it's going to use around 45 to $65 billion. So what's the emissions on that, I wonder? And then it's going to consume up to 620 megawatts, which means it's running on external power. So you can't say, and this is despicable, this claim that it's not going to have any CO2 emissions. It's going to be hemorrhaging tritium, which is radioactive water, among other things. It's going to hemorrhage, and all the studies reflect that. That's unassailable. Consumed by the reactor and facilities will range up to 600 plus meg uh, megawatts. The best result achieved for fusion, two years ago they claimed they got enough extra power from 150 million degree Fahrenheit temperatures to power a 9 volt battery. Just blows my mind. So last year they claimed uh, they could have boiled an extra 36 jugs of uh, kettles of water. Well, how, how many kettles of water, specifically though, can you boil at 150 million degrees? And how were you able to extrapolate that? Because that's impossible. Woo, she's howling out there now. The International Thermal Nuclear Experimental Reactor. They'll, they'll steal every precious metal on the planet and they'll, they'll steal all the helium. Remember a decade or two ago they said uh, we're going to run out of helium? No, the nuclear industry wanted it all. Cracks up to 2.2 millimeters had developed and this thing is 23 kilometers of piping welded onto the surface of the shield so they can't use it. France is uh, another delays for their 25 broken reactors. So stupid, right? They refuse, they refuse to, uh, to use anything but their nuclear, and now they got no nuclear. Not enough. And instead of looking ahead, a decade ago, and coming up with solutions, they're waiting until all the reactors are breaking. They're like, well, we're going to build six more. Yeah, but... You got no more water. 70% of your water is going to the nuclear as it is. How many lies can you tell at the one time? Work begins on the first French EPR in 2003, Flameville in Northwest, for delivery in 2012 at a cost of $3 billion. It's like this is a, uh, now it's uh, $16 billion cost blowout. Instead of coming online 2012, they're hoping 2023. But now they just we covered it just today. They got more cracks at the one in Finland, for instance. So they're going to assume the other one in China is the same thing, which has already leaked huge amounts. The like the whole story is: Did you know pro nuclear comic book was the best seller in France? Pro nuclear comic book. Well, you know, like Spider-Man and the Hulk were created by the nuclear industry and used to bludgeon children's common sense and adults' common sense, obviously, and was successful. Yes, nuclear energy produces toxic waste, but nuclear science knows how to store it. What are you talking about? You store it open air or in the fuel pools where it's still splitting the atoms and hemorrhaging them to the environment. Like, because they... In order to even try to make themselves appear human, there's only one way they can do it, is they got to tell bald-faced lies. Just make stuff up. Four provinces in Canada working on a small modular reactor development project signed a memorandum of understanding you wouldn't look at anything else, no matter how cheap it was. We'll only take the most expensive reactors you can come up with if you can come up with it any time in the future which you probably can't Bruce Power promotes nuke Bruce Power <laughs> like try not to swallow my tongue here Bruce Power promotes nuclear constipated party 27 in shitty Egypt this year 
United Nations yearly 13-day Santatic ritual of poisoning the planet with radioactive fallout. Bruce Powell was part of the Canadian delegations. Last year, there was a $4.3 billion available for renewable energy to take it and create storage for the renewable energy so they can run 24 hours a day. Bruce Power said, no way, we're, we, we want all of it, everything. Give us the $4.3 billion. Canadian government was like, of course, I've never even thought about it. We were just kidding if it was for the renewable industry. So Bruce Power took $4.3 billion to, to build a, get a load of this, to build a pumped hydro for their nuclear power plant that they don't need. But they can't let the renewable have it. The year before that, they closed uh, 200 wind farms in Ontario because they were competing heavily with uh, nuclear. In fact, nuclear restricted them to only running in the daytime. And some kind of evil is called nuclear. Director of the Community and Media Relations and Economic Development for a nuclear company, folks. John Pervert said nuclear power is a necessary part of the zero carbon future, zero carbon future. Nuclear runs on two external power plants, gas, oil, and coal. Big ones. Dedicated to it, to build it, to run it, and then 60 years of decommission it, or whatever it takes. And you can't have any birds, insects, animals, mammals, anything else without carbon. You can't survive without carbon. Lots of people don't recognize that Bruce Powers is zero emitting technology. Now, we've been hearing this since the Constipated Party 27, Raphael Grossi. Uh, it's not a zero, like to call it nuclear, the biggest polluter on the entire planet, period, bar nothing. The, the, the most the threatening thing to the planet is the nuclear industry, the emissions. To call it non zero emission technology. That's just a crime, man. That's just a crime. If we're going to reach the net zero targets provincially, federally, and internationally, nuclear got to be part of the conversation. Well, really interesting about the 13-day bizarre cult uh, Yahoo down in Egypt, the Constipated Party 27, they never mentioned a single time. They mentioned wind and solar, but they never mentioned geothermal, same as last year, a single time. Geothermal, you can build a geothermal right alongside a gas, oil, coal, nuclear. When you finish facility, you switch on a geothermal and switch off the gas, oil, coal, and nuclear. And so they're gone. They know this is here and this is, is now officially started. So they're trying to, they're trying to, hoodwink countries and everybody else and they're spending exorbitant amounts of monies that they don't need. They sell them a wolf ticket for three billion, but it ends up costing 12 or 18. If they're lucky. It's a, it's a hateful industry. And the emissions from the used fuel worldwide is catastrophic, has now exterminated the majority of the species as the research expeditions that we carried out in the last decade clearly shows. Crisis expert on blackout danger, federal government is trying to outsmart the laws of physics. This is from Germany, and good luck trying to figure out what they're talking about. If you do, congratulations. I'm, I'm not doing that to my brain. It's Germany. Every time I get a story from Germany, not every time, but every so often, it's just like, I, I can't spend a couple of hours trying to figure out what the hell it is you're trying to say. I don't know why they do that either. Most of humanity just experienced the warmest October on record. Yay. Thanks to Fukushima. U.S. to supply Thailand and the Philippines with small modular nuclear reactors. This is a messed up story, folks. The American Vice President Kamala Harris with the Philippine President Bang Bang Marcos Jr. I mean, they're in typhoon land, they're in earthquake city. 
They're talking about nuclear? Can be small as a bucket. Five-gallon bucket, folks. I never heard that one before. That's a new one on me. The small modular reactors can be as small as a bucket. I was like, no way! And transportable are to be constructed under the highest standards of safety, security, and non-proliferation. You really think you can't tie a bunch of explosives onto a five-gallon bucket and blow it up? In a press conference, the White House, White House in America, said a partnership with Thailand would build capacity for secure and safe deployment of advanced nuclear reactor technology. So they're going to use that country for guinea pigs. The unique benefits of small modular reactors that actually don't exist, the net zero emissions that don't exist, no timeline for something that don't exist, which is pretty smart. Praise unique benefits of the reactors, which besides providing reliable power, can fight climate change, which don't exist, of course, the nuclear reactors. The small modular reactors don't exist. They barely exist on a piece of paper. A reactor could be as small as a 5-gallon, 18.9-liter button. Button? What the frick are you talking about, Dana? Bucket! Yeah, I've seen it all now. Once I stopped laughing, I was like, Jesus, they might be serious. And then I blew up laughing again. I'm like, oh, that's ridiculous. What are they talking about? I've never seen this before. So you wrap a bunch of explosives on it, Ella Akbar, and away she goes, right? How many suicide bombers does it take to equal an aircraft carrier, I wonder? Hell, how many uh, suicide bombers does it take to equal an Abrams tank that they shoot the 155 millimeter depleted uranium munitions, the dull ram, depleted uranium low-level radioactive materials, the pyroplastic, that are burning as they go through the year, releasing the technetium-99 and everything else, uh, and they got a 900 foot kill ratio. They, they blow a crater that's 900 feet wide. Three football fields. How many suicide bombers does it take to equal one of those 155 millimeter depleted uranium munitions? Don't they realize it's actually evil? It's criminal on top of that, but it's evil. To, to, you know, why use a hardened material that's meant for hardened deep underground bunkers, maybe, on the civilian population. Because that's what they've done, right? If you look at Afghanistan or Iraq or Syria, they flatten every building in the country. That's collective punishment. That's a war crime. Like the United Nations done to North Korea. It's a war crime. According to New Scale, oh, I know there was a catch there somewhere, a U.S. small modular reactor manufacturer estimated initial cost at about half a million dollars. What, for the five-gallon buckets? The Philippines began construction of Batin nuclear power plant in 1976. It's about uh, 100 kilometers west of Manila. The plant's constructed above a major fault line. So they built it right on the fault line itself because the nuclear industry told them to. They're so lucky they didn't uh, fire it up, aren't they? Was mothballed amid safety concerns after Chernobyl. No, no. It was on a fault line. Today, the Philippines run a couple of research reactors for training, right? Because they got, the industry will find a way to get in the country. And educate, th these are not educational purposes. These are genocide machines. The reactors which boast zero greenhouse gas emissions. And I apologize to everybody because each day I got to say this 50, 60, 100 times. But that's, what, that's the point, right? This brainwashing that they're doing is blatant. How do all the journalists know to frame the narratives exactly like the nuclear lobbyists would do, I wonder? Can be factory made, transportable, relocated. These, these are um, 
you know, try transporting any kind of nuclear waste through anywhere in your country. There's an absurd amount of laws to, that you got to get through, tick all the boxes. It takes you a couple of months before you can even fulfill the application. Because to, a single accident can, can isolate parts of the country. And this, this is real, real propaganda. It can be factory made. Well, yeah, anything can be factory made, but it's not. It doesn't exist. You can't call zero greenhouse gases when radioactive isotopes are the greenhouse gases that is causing it. It's desperation, eh? That's their, their language uh, quantifies that what they're doing is desperation. There is no nuclear renaissance. Last year, was 333 large nuclear power plants were the renewables that came online, and only 0.4. Uh, so there's 291 gigawatts, which is equal to 333 nuclear power plants were the renewables coming online, versus 0 0.4 for nuclear, which is equal to less than a half of a nuclear power plant. Versus 333 nuclear power plants were the renewables. And because they scuttled the storage, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist, but because they, they managed to thwart the industry from accumulating the money to have storage to proof for proof of concept worldwide, the industry is still in the doldrum, right? But it's still flatlining the nuclear disaster industry, thank goodness. The small modular reactors are designed to be safer, but there is only one design. And it's missing about a thousand pieces of paper. And there's no such thing as a safer. It's you're using worse fuel. You're using mixed oxide fuel that's incredibly enriched. Ah, uh, the lies these people tell. I can barely keep up with it. It's difficult to say whether the real world experience will show that to be the case and also how usefully it will be for addressing climate change. They are climate change. Their emissions pulse energy every second, unlike gas, oil, and coal. I've been hearing about small modular reactors for about a decade, adding that until we build and get a sense of what the operating them is like and what costs are like, I'm going to be a bit skeptical. International Energy Agency, which is now controlled by um, Fate Bristol, said, who was in the nuclear industry for years or decades, said most small modular reactor projects are in the conceptual design. Uh, noting China and Russia among the countries that operate small modular reactor phototypes. No, they're not. There is no small modular reactors. They were they're like the, the academic nuclear barge that Russia has. They were trying to call that a, a small modular reactors. But the, these barges are massive. The, the reactor sites uh, on the barges are massive. It's a big Chernobyls on water, basically. Nuclear fans will mostly shift the argument to the ill-defined notion of small modular reactors, which don't actually exist and may never exist. And while in the office, the U.S. President George W. Bush, w. Bush launched a nuclear power program which led to talks of a nuclear renaissance but yielded only two projects. And despite no effective opposition, no effective opposition, despite a one-sided conversation, They expect that the number of small modular reactors constructed will also will be also tiny, insignificant number. And I agree with that assessment wholeheartedly, by the way. The work of decarbonizing energy supply will be done almost entirely by the sun and wind, but it should be done by geothermal. We have the technology to tunnel down and then use lasers to evaporate until we get to the depth we need and plug and play. No commodities forever and ever. <laughs> the
The waste bin, nuclear waste dumping and storage in the Pacific. There's a story we can't cover enough. Just to kind of give you some concept of how batshit lunatic the industry actually is. In Japan, the Japan, 1979. Cited the London, dump, the London Dumping Convention for Nuclear Waste as its authority. The Japanese government announced its intent to experimentally dump 10,000 drums, 500 curries. Now, a curry is 37 billion atomic decays a second. The Japanese plan with 10,000 drums of 500 curries. So, uh, CC-137 is around 88 curries per gram. So we'll do the similar for this. So 88 into 500, because they don't tell you what the curries are, right? It's 5.6 grams. So 5.6 grams, they're saying contaminated 10,000 drums to the point where they had to dump it in the Pacific Ocean. So by, right? Because people don't, people say, well, what's a curry? They say 37 billion atomic disintegrations. So it seems like a lot, and it is. But that's the lie, right? That's an incredible, dangerous lie. It's 500 curries per drum. Five grams, five plus grams per drums. Five and a half grams, 5.7 grams per drums. It's still a shocking amount when you add it up for each drum. Is It's not the real number or even close to it. I'll bring up the calculator. Just so you can get, you can wrap your mind around. I've done that wrong. So 500 times, or oh I said that wrong, 37 billion. I'll, I'll straighten it out now, though. So 37 billion atomic decays is 18 trillion 500 billion atomic decays which is equal to 5.6 grams. Because each gram is 88 curry, so 88 times 37 billion. I forgot to put that part in there for you. Maybe I didn't, I don't know. Who knows? Who cares? When you... Now, each... If each... I'm bringing bring it up. I didn't bring it up. So each drum, say, had 5.5 grams in it, then that's 18 trillion 500 billion atomic decays a second in each drum. That would make sense. I got that wrong, did I? Wait now. What did I do here? Well, I, I'd done it as if each one had a single curry, so it was 500 curries, which is what they said, wasn't it? Who knows anymore? Let me see. Go backwards. Yeah, 500 curries. So the drum gets down 100 feet or so and it implodes because there's 14.5 pounds per square inch for every 33 feet that it falls. Dumping was scheduled to occur in the autumn of 81 after Japan ratified the treaty. Japan's legacy is disgusting, by the way. You know, go back 150 years all the way to now. It's a disgusting legacy. Full-scale dumping of 100,000 curries a year was to commence in the same location after the Japanese government verified the safety. So 100,000 curries... A hundred thousand curries divi divided by eighty-eight curries to get grams is one thousand one hundred and thirty-six grams, which is twenty-nine ounces. Or sorry, take twenty-nine ounces to get pounds, and you got thirty-nine pounds or sixteen pounds, rather. Who knows what I got done there? Hang on. Uh, 
1,000, 1 million divided by 88, or 100,000 divided by 88 is grams. Divide the grams Did I have 29 there? Yeah, divided by 29 to get ounces. And then the last one, I can't remember what the hell that's all about. Sue me. The dumping was scheduled to occur in the autumn of 81 after Japan. 100,000 curries a year was to be dumped. So that's their legacy is dumping it into the ocean. And if you look at what they've done with Fukushima, the constant hemorrhaging into the ocean, it's catastrophic. Nuclear energy, we can't do it, and we should. This is a Canadian pathetic, brutal betrayal again. Financial post, of course. Small modular reactors are also covered in a tax, a clean technology investment tax credit for 30%. A bold step for Ottawa, which is capital of Canada, given this historical takeover position, lukewarm position on nuclear. It's bad news for Canadian climate action and the Canadian economy can do, ranked as one of Canada's top engineering achievements and has a proven track record of deep and rapid decarbonization. This is a ludicrous assertion. Each reactor needs two external power plants just to run it. Export panel recommends a radical reduction of permissible levels of tritium in drinking water in Ontario, where these reactors are too, these can do no pieces are at. An expert panel included a 25 month study of the health dangers of radioactive tritium, excluding all the, the real isotopes, by the way, in drinking water, and concluded that the current permissible level in Ontario are hundreds of times too high. 350 times too high, in fact. The final report from the Ontario Drinking Water Advisory Council is entitled Report and Advice on the Ontario Drinking Water Quality Standards for Tritium. Because, you know, reactors only make tritium, Dana. Not uranium, plutonium, and americium, and neptunium, and everything else. But anyway, it recommended the current permissible level of 7,000 becquels per liter to be reduced to 20 becquels per liter. 20 from 7,000. And here's how it works. So Beckwell is a unit of radioactivity. Beckwell indicates that there is one radioactive disintegration happening every second. Thus, a standard of 7,000 Beckwells per liter means that in one liter of drinking water, it's permissible to have 7,000 radioactive disintegrations happening every second. But you're going to drink more than a liter, right? Or... 420,000 disintegrations each minute or 25.2 million disintegrations each hour all within a single liter of water. So if someone drinks that liter of water, the disintegration continues to take place inside his or her body. Now what about you drink another liter? Well now you got another, another mathematical equation, another 25 million an hour. If you drink another liter each day, this stays in your body, see? No, it's not evil at all. And it wrecks your chromosomes, your DNA, and your immune system, and your white, your red blood cells. It's instant, it's permanent, it's sustained, it's forever, whatever you want to call it. So that's the standard of 7,000 Beckwells. Just drinking one liter and never drinking any water again means you get uh, 420,000 man-made atomic disintegrations per second each minute in your body. And they're going to wreck in every direction, DNA and chromosome, every single pulse. But it's not that easy because you're going to have all the other full range isotopes in the same samples. Consequences of nuclear imperialism and colonialism. Climate change, the war, 
Bear with me, I gotta be right back. Voila. I had to clean out the old air conditioner. Let me see what we got going on here. So organizers this week's inaugural nuclear connection across the Oceania Conference at the University of Otago in the Pacific Oceans. The war in Ukraine has heightened people's awareness of the ongoing threat of nuclear war and could be induced by nuclear weapons or the destruction of nuclear infrastructure. Some can argue a nuclear meltdown is infinitely worse than a nuclear bomb because it's uh, consuming steel and rebar and rocks and everything else and atomizing and aerosoling, ionizing and radiating it constantly into the environment. It's a perpetual dirty bomb of uh, horrific proportions. So they're basically talking about how the different countries poise in different places, you know, like French and uh, French Polynesian Islands, for instance, um, British and Christmas Island, the Americans and the Marshall Islands, many, many, many other places, not just the few that I have to mention. And they have room to it for the entire planet uh, so the nuclear industry can make a few bucks. And of course, the Aboriginal people, now I've covered this many times, everywhere we go, everything, you know, wherever there's native communities, this is where they want to put the nuclear waste, and they usually do. Uh, so always attack upon the natives of the countries. That's what the nuclear industry has. Its first objective is how do we attack the natives in this country? How do we get our foot in the door? Well, let's get a test reactor, and he won't let us have a big one. Time for a new focus on fast reactors. New focus on fast reactors. Fast neutron reactors have been under development since the earliest days. Of this. It's a really, really long story. We're not going to get through that. <coughs> These words were spoken this year by IAEA Director General Raphael Grossi, which is right there, Raphael, the, the actual devil. He's an actual demon, right? The things he's done. He replaced the other demons. Spoke at the opening of the Ford International Conference on fast reactors and related fuel cycles. So reactors are about the fuel cycles, not about the reactors or nuclear power. It's about making the fuel rods, irradiating the fuel rods so you can make weapons out of the, out of the stuff you're going to harvest from it. Sustainable clean energy for the future. Can you imagine being Raphael Grossi and how gross he actually is. Besides being low carbon like all nuclear reactors, fast reactors, which are using mixed oxide fuel to, to breed uh, isotopes to make more fuel with, like Santa Susana that melted down. And, you know, most of the reactors up there never had containments, same as uh, Hanford. They shrink the environmental footprint of waste. No, they don't. They just take out a fraction and they still leave all the other waste. They just take out what they want, uranium, plutonium, and they leave everything else. So now you're taking out a couple of percentages of the weight. So if it weighs 10 pounds, there's still 9 pounds and 9.9 .9 pounds left. And it's gone through a chain reaction again. So... It's still splitting atoms, but extremely energetic. That's what mixed oxide fuel does. That's what makes it so volatile. The Donneray Fast Reactor in Scotland, in the UK, uh, they expect that site to be cleaned up in about 315 years, if they can come up with technology to do it. 
from the next 315 years. And uh, these, these have showed up around the world. All the countries have had kick at this can, and all of them have failed. The whole legacy is hideous. It's a very long story, that story. It's a very useful story. I'm not going to take you through it because it basically every country has tried the fast breeder reactors and every country has failed without exception and failed being had a nuclear meltdown of some type. Russia's attacks risk nuclear catastrophe, Ukraine nuclear energy chief. For the 60th, 70th time, we've heard him say that. <coughs> risk a nuclear catastrophe. Really attacking a nuclear power, running. What was even crazy was that they were running the plant where there was a war raging around them. And we, we covered that many, many times when it was happening, right? But the IRA gets to actually run the reactors in a war zone. The, the madness, just the very madness of doing that. It's hard to believe they haven't had any releases. It's very difficult to accept that they had no releases. British Energy Tour knocked out power to Ukraine's civilians and its nuclear power plants. Well, because of meltdown, that's that's you know the world's biggest dirty bombs you're sending in motion, right? You got Grossi in the UN vehicles with all the cameras there. He is a demon, though, isn't he? Look at this picture here of him. He looks like death, don't he? Here he is, headed off to the Russian, to the Ukrainian nuclear power plant to survey. Yeah, really? And is captured by Russia? You think uh, they got any uh, sway over the Russian soldiers? <laughs> Federal state leaders finally grasp nuclear power's value in taking on climate emergency. That's, um, that's the last nuclear power plant in, that's the last nuclear power plant in California. And again, look at this, without emitting a greenhouse gases. So this is a shocking horrific amount of propaganda in the last couple of years, but particularly the last couple of months. Without the 8% of the state's electricity Diablo Canyon supplies, the rolling blackout seen in 2020 and narrowly avoided in September threatens to become common. Without the 8% of electricity that Diablo Canyon supplies, the rolling blackouts in 2020 were, were caused by uh, gas plants and oil plants. Not not by any uh, nuclear. Nuclear was running. Diablo Canyon was running during that time. It didn't stop the blackouts. Fear, right? Fear is the driving force. I got no idea. Only one new reactor has opened in the U.S. since 1996, which is Watts Bar. It took 43 years to get that up and running. If France can safely handle the nuclear waste storage, they don't have a nuclear waste storage uh, facility. What are you talking about? So can the United States. France doesn't have a nuclear waste storage site dedicated to nuclear storage. So they're going to use tiny drones to go in and blow the radiation all over the place. And claim that everything is safe, I guess. Yay. The thallium activated cesium iodine oscillators is used to detect the gamma radiation that's blown all over the place. So it's madness. The whole story is just madness. So that's one of them, dear, cutting through the ear. 
And look at that plywood doors. They're not even plywood. They're press wood. Cheap as you can get. What the hell is that all about? That must be one of the reprocessing facilities, isn't it? A piece of nuclear history goes on sale Black Friday. Prices to drop by one million dollars. You know what it is? If you got two point four million dollars on Black Friday, you can own a piece of Hanford Nuclear Reservation history. A million dollar discount. B reactor is now preserved as a part of the Manhattan Project, but this lead window is on. S is now going for 3.4 million, but for Black Friday, they're gonna drop a million dollars off it. So 2.4 million dollars for a lead glass from the Manhattan Project from Hanford B reactor. And she's howling out here. Holy shit. More delays for French reactors. All 25 of them that are broken. Want to buy into a nuclear power project? This is hilarious. UAMS, which they were going to build 12 reactors, right? And they were getting all these communities to, to say they take the power and pay in advance. This is how they were going to do it, right? at the Idaho National Laboratory. And after seven years, they still need money. And they got 50 members coordinated on buying, delivering electricity. We'll soon be updating the 27 entities that have opted into, uh, which was called a carbon-free power project. And uh, originally when that showed up, I was, I was just absurdly uh, pissed off that they'd done that. And the price is going up. Of course it is, nuclear. New scale, the failed small modular reactor from Oregon has given the members an earlier estimate of $58 per megawatt hour, but now they're saying it's going to cost up to $100 per megawatt hour, it's almost double that they're going to have to pay for it, a boy. He said, I honestly think there's nothing more important than nuclear, the mayor of the city that's going to make a lot of money off it. And utility scale battery storage only beginning to emerge, so we got to have nuclear. So the only kind of storage she's willing to acknowledge is batteries that don't exist, instead of all the uh, storage that does exist. Uh, and the, the story goes on and on and on. But the, the guy who wrote the story. Two. Rocky Mountain, yeah, Fitzpatrick is the Salt Lake Tribune's renewable energy reporter. Nuclear is not renewable energy. A position funded by a grant from Rocky Mountain Power, and Rocky Mountain Power is Utah's largest electricity utility. He announced it was considering Utah and other sites for a different type of nuclear power plants that uses sodium instead of water to cool the reactors. Oh, and it also employs a molten salt storage system to store energy uh, for deployment when wind and solar decline. Well, why not give wind and solar to storage? Why give it to the nuclear plant to use for wind and solar? It's just some serious evilness engineering you're talking about right there, right? They employ a molten salt storage station to store energy for when wind and solar doesn't uh, produce any energy. So rather than wind and solar having storage, I mean, because they're counting that wind and solar will never have storage. So why don't wind and solar uh, employ storage because the nuclear industry just said they're going to do it because wind and solar don't have storage. Just try making that up on your own. That's one of my favorite stories tonight. 
Kim Jong Un's sister makes insulting threat to South Korea over more sanctions. God bless her heart, man. Calling his president and the government idiots and running wild dogs gunning on a bone given to him by the United States. Uh, this is South Korea and U.S. leaders. It calls previously called South Korea president a rat and a prostitute, respectively, while describing former U.S. President Donald Trump as a mentally deranged U.S. dotard. And in March 2021, when Moon was still in office, Kim Jong, Kim Yo Jong, the sister, called him a pirate raised by the Americans. And uh, I don't disagree. I don't disagree at all. Not, not even, not even that much. Wow. How's the poll doing? Once a poll, always a poll. Is building all nuclear plants in prime active farmland um, a calculated, ruthless assault upon children? And we got a resounding yes. Of course it is. Dana. You can take nuclear. Nuclear is really good at being evil. It's no good at anything else. It's good at censoring me on top of that. That's the way it is. Not much I can do about it. That's the price you pay for being honest. It's the price you pay for working like a dog five days a week. Nothing I can do about it. We got to do the work. We got 37 votes. We think all 37 people. Everybody has a good night, good weekend. A little stuffed up tonight, I noticed. That's the way it goes. What time is it? Ten minutes to midnight. Wow. Good night, everybody. I'm too burnt out to go another two minutes. I really am. It's been a tough week. A lot of stories this week. A lot of information. And then we had uh, two weeks of the conference of parties, so we're doing double time. <sighs> I'm just exhausted. It's a good show. I'm really happy with it. If you made it this far, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Let's see, we got a staggering 24 people on the show. That's about a whole decade of hard work will get you. A massive crowd. It's all just censorship, nothing personal. Evil is, it's natural for evil to take the coward route instead of a debate, right? Have a great night, great day tomorrow. I'll see everybody on the other side on Sunday. I'll be rejuvenated, refreshed, or pissed off, it's hard to say. But I'll be Dana. I'll be her for sure. Take care, folks. <laughs>